I wanted to talk about expectations. I thought maybe it might be a good topic. Um, because I see it a lot, expectations. Actually, if I maybe understood correctly, I think people were getting a little upset because of some expectations. Um, expectations is a big thing when it comes to um, this lifestyle transformation. And um, I don't know, another word for expectations is sometimes entitlement. Sometimes people feel entitled to certain things. They expect certain things. Um, so I wrote it. As I said, I've been struggling a little bit myself, so I kind of found it a little bit on a personal side. So I wrote it, and I'm going to actually start to read it, and then I'll kind of go off and talk as I, I, as I should. But have you ever expected something in life, but it didn't work out as you had planned? You have to relate this now to your own experience. It has the, it has the makings of this program. It has the makings of your life when you really apply it. Did you feel frustrated? Did you feel angry? Do you feel cheated? Truth is, we have all come to expect certain outcomes. It's a part of who we are. It's a part of our makeup. It's just really who we are. Unfortunately, though, expectations of everyone, including ourselves, are spiraling out of control. We no longer just want things, we expect things. Expecting is not the best thing, because with expecting, the problems are that we set ourselves up for problems and disappointments. Um, I use this a lot, actually, when I have clients, because a lot of times people will ask me this question. What do you think, or what can I expect of my changes in the next 16 weeks? What can I lose? I want to lose 30 kilos. Somebody the other day asked me if she could lose 45 kilos in a 16-week period of time. My answer wasn't, of course, no, because if I said no, it would probably deflate her. I don't know why she, 45 kilos is a lot of weight to lose in a very short amount of time. But when people ask me this question, I'm not quite sure how to answer it because I don't know if I should say absolutely not or is there something wrong in your mind that you would expect to lose so much so quickly? So all I say is this. Imagine I was your financial advisor or your stockbroker and you wanted to invest in me and invest in my ideas and you gave me 5,000 euros and I said, all right, well, I'm going to take that 5,000 euros and I'm going to make 100,000 euros for you. And time goes on. You're happy about that. You, you are now expecting the 100,000 euros. And when it comes time to sell your stocks and you get your money back, all I tell you is, unfortunately, I only have 25,000 euros for you. How does the person feel? Absolutely. They feel, for some reason, cheated. They're angry. They're frustrated. They only made 20,000 euros. They only made 20,000 euros. But they're, they, they're angry because they had this entitlement or they expected, because of my words, that they would make 100,000. So they were imagining the biggest, oh my God, I invested 5,000, I'm going to make 95,000 euro profit. What happens, of course, in that is that we fail to see the real gift, because anything over that 5,000 is a gift, but we have come to expect things, and when they don't materialize, we get upset. So I tell the clients always to expect 0.9 to a kilo, 0.45 to 0.9 kilos per week. And if you looked at it that way, See, you're doing it already. You made a face. Don't make faces. Because that's almost a kilo a week. A kilo of fat per week. Think about it in terms of time. What is it over 20 weeks? 20 kilos. We spend time quibbling and worrying about the fact that we don't have the big thing when the little things add up to big things. So I tell the client that, 0.45 to 1. Now, what happens to the client that after 16 or 20 weeks loses 35 kilos when she only expected to lose 15? 
She's very happy and she's feeling very successful. And most importantly, about her own self, her, her, her confidence has risen in her own beliefs and power because she did more. She superseded her expectations. I'm very careful when it comes to these types of things to never build something up more than it should be built up. I'm telling you the truth. If I tell somebody they're going to lose 10 kilos in the month and they walk in the door and lose eight, they are not happy. Yet, when you think of what I just said, how can you not be happy? But you missed the memo. <laughs> Joking. Don't get too close. So a lot of times when our expectations are that high, they supersede reality. And reality is something that what it all really boils down to, what the reality is. What can you expect, really? Expect the best. But what's best at the moment, you won't know. You don't know what's best. You don't know what you're doing right now. Is this the best it could be? Is it the worst it could be? You don't even know really where you're at. You're just changing. I mean, is this the end of you? Is this the be all that you can be right where you are right now? You don't know. So it's, you have to be very, very careful in how you kind of look at all of this when it comes to you and your life. Only, only when you look back at the circumstances can you tell what was best. And that's a fact. I don't know if any of you um, go on my Facebook. But recently the day I put on this post, and I thought it was very, very good. And it says, you never know what's around the corner. It could be everything. It could be nothing. You keep putting one foot in front of the other, and then one day you look back, and you've climbed a mountain. Do you follow the gist? I mean, when you're sitting there, and you're just taking it day by day without these huge expectations, you won't get let down. It's not just about you. You know what the kind of pressure that you put on others when you lay expectations on them? You become afraid to move. You become afraid to say anything, do anything. Trust me, it's not just about you know, your health life. It's about your emotional life. It's about your life in all aspects with friends and family and loved ones. Expectations are very, very dangerous. Life is not about meeting expectations, but rather going after what you want and being appreciative of the steps taken in the process. That's what it's about. This is your life journey right now. This is a pivotal moment in your life. Every day that you're living it right now is pivotal. It's impacting in reality. It's impacting because you've all taken this different turn, a different path. And, you know, somebody said to you, I mean, if you spoke to me, I would have told you, you know, when you came into the program, you have two roads that you can choose. You can choose the road that you're on right now and where you're going to be down the road, you can almost assume. Because if you're not eating well, if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not speaking highly of yourself, if you're not looking in the mirror and realizing just what of a valuable person that you are, if you keep doing the things that you are doing, what you can probably assume is that you're going to get worse. Or, you know, you can take the other path. I don't, I don't need a chair. Oh. No. The, the water doesn't need a chair. Thanks. Or you can take the other path, and the other path is an opportunity. Not an expectation, an opportunity. A chance to be what you want to be. However you want to, however you want to see it, however it unveils. And it's in, in its own timing. That's the other path. So you're on this path right now. I mean, that's why you're here, I'm, I'm assuming. That's why you're here. And where you are right now in the, this moment, in the here and the now, is what's most important. It's not where you are in a month or six months. And it's not where you were a year ago either that counts. And it's not where you were yesterday that counts. It's where you are right here and right now. And all you need to really worry about there's nothing. There's nothing to worry about. Just keep doing what you do. It's amazing. Everybody here is a different age, born at a different time, in a different place, different circumstances, and you're still here. 
You know, I, how long ago was it? Selena, when was it? Three weeks ago? I walked out in front of a, uh, I walked out across the street to get uh, two muffins, one for me and one for Ritien, and I got hit by a car. I didn't see it, and it hit me and threw me in the air and knocked me on top of my car. Then I bounced off my car. Sorry? Hit my what? Is that all right? And I bounced on top of my car, bounced off of my car, looked at my car. I said, oh, please don't damage it. And then looked at him and was embarrassed and told him to move on. Don't worry about me. Meanwhile, he had a huge dent, <laughs> huge dent. <laughs> when I'm saying dent from the top of his hood to the bottom of the door. <laughs> so if he had gotten out, I'm sure he wouldn't be happy with me, though he hit me. Um, you are where you're supposed to be. And from that moment backwards, it's perfect. Even in that kind of a disastrous circumstances, there's something very positive about it. There's a silver lining in all of it. You learn something from it. I don't care how bad it is. You learn something from it. I learned, I'm not in Canada. Don't look left, look right. <laughs> because at home, I look this way so I don't get hit. And I look this way and pff, that's it. So I learned something important. And I'm here to talk about it. But do you understand what I'm saying is that you are here right now under all circumstances, good, bad, or indifferent. It doesn't make a difference. Just to appreciate those things and not to expect much, much more. When it comes to our bodies, for example, just because we're good at doing everything right doesn't mean we'll lose 10 kilos of fat in one month. And that's something that I think everybody would like to do. So why is there this disappointment, to put it lightly, and it is put lightly because people want to get the most, when only you lose four kilos of fat and put on two kilos of muscle. You have no idea how disheartening it is to see someone walk in the office every single time. And I could assess every one of you, or someone else will assess every one of you, but one thing I notice for sure is when everybody walks in, their eyes are down. They expect the worst. They assume it's the worst. I don't know why. Anyone I've ever assessed is always that way. They walk in, head shaking. You okay? Uh, what's wrong? Oh, I didn't do very well. Why? You look great. No. <laughs> okay. So I say, what's the problem? Well, I didn't lose much weight. So you're on the scale then? Yeah. <laughs> Supposed to be a rule, right? Get off the scale. So how much did you lose? Four kilos. Like it's a problem. Like it should, that's what we said. A kilo, 4.45 to 0.9 per week. You lost four kilos. Well, how do you know what you lost? I don't know. It's, it's, it's negative, it's so, it's such a downer. And then, as that's happening, all right, well forget the weight. How do you feel? Oh, I feel good. Oh, you feel good? What do you mean you feel good? Well, I have more energy. Oh, okay. What were you doing a month ago when you walked into the program? How much walking were you doing then? No, I wasn't walking at all. Oh, okay, what are you doing now? 35 minutes. Oh, wow, so you're doing 35 minutes more per day than you were doing in the beginning. Yes. How's your clothes? Are they the same? No, no, they're looser. I should pull my pants in by two inches, by two, oh, interesting. Anything else? No, I just have more energy. I'm stronger. I'm doing something now I never did before. Blah, 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 blah. Do you, you see the point? And down, down. So we do the evaluation. Lost eight kilos of fat, put on four kilos of lean. Water weight was up, they're up. Do the, the skin folds down like 60 millimeters. Did the measurements down 11 inches. Oh, well that's why everything was falling off. All of a sudden it's like a light bulb went off and they realized it all. All the way, I knew it, you know, I could tell. But they didn't walk in that way. Expectations, you know, expectations, it's wrong. You don't have a clue. 
You have no idea what you were doing when you walked in the door the first time when you were saying I'm 80 kilos or I'm 60 kilos or I'm eating no food or all this. You had no idea what was going on with you physically and you still don't really have an idea. You have to learn and it takes time. It's a process. Stop expecting. You lost four kilos of fat and put on two kilos of muscle. Wow, good for you. That's more than you did before, for sure. Before, you lost a bunch of water, lost a bunch of energy. You were doing less. You were eating wrong. You were moody and miserable. Your husbands were wanting to leave the house because they couldn't handle the fact that you were sitting there grazing on grass all day long. <laughs> you couldn't eat. You were afraid to come home smelling like McDonald's or a pizza because she'd kill you. It's changed, you know, it's better. I'll admit, not all expectations are bad. And some expectations can have a positive effect on us. It helps us set the bar high. So we can have something to strive towards. But I think many of us take it way too far. Our expectations of ourselves to have super amazing results is like expecting us to be super, super beings, not human beings. So when we fail to lose the 10 kilos, we shame ourselves for not being the best. We fail to see ourselves as human and treat ourselves with disgrace. And then the guilt. It's then, then the problem starts because you haven't accomplished your objective because you haven't met the standard. How many times have you stepped on the scale in the month when you shouldn't and you're only down a kilo and you said to yourself, it's not working. It's not working. And because it's not working, because the scale didn't jump, because you didn't look at the other things I just said, your expectations were big, so you expected all of a sudden the scale would just jump out and it'd be like such a huge change, and you got down on yourself, and then you went and said, well, huh, if I only lost a kilo in two weeks, it won't matter if I eat this, that, this, and that. And off you go. And now you're running. You're in the bad foods now. And then you say to yourself, now that you're in the bad food, you're eating it because you feel like you're justified in doing so because you didn't get what you expected. It didn't work out the way you had planned. So it's okay to do what you're doing right now because, well, you know, I deserve it. It's not working anyway. And then you do it, and what do you feel after that? Guilt. Oh, my God. Look what I've done. You've, I've lied to myself. I convinced myself it was okay. No, you're all guilty. And then you're feeling bad about that. And then it becomes a vicious cycle. All for what? Expectations can really make you crazy. Make you believe something is yours when in fact all it is is something that you want. We all want that raise come performance to review at work. We all want the nice car, the nice home. We all want the perfect relationship, family. We all want love the way we want it. We want the body to die for it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what is wrong is when we expect these things, it sets us up for unnecessary disappointment. So how dare we hold on to our expectations and, and not expect the same in return? My advice is, it doesn't hurt to want. It doesn't hurt to try your very best to succeed, but it does damage to hold an expectation of ourselves or others. So when you're thinking these things, I posted this on Facebook if you want to go back and find it. It's on the group page as well. When you're thinking these things now, try, try to work this, this. I mean, these mentor meetings, these things now, what they're really about is just trying to help you just see different perspectives. It's just my perspective. It doesn't make it right. I mean, I'm not the end-all, be-all in information. I'm just a person with a different point of view. And everyone here has a different point of view. So it's not that I'm right. But I think that there's a difference between me and you. I think that's why I'm standing here and you're standing there looking at me. Not that I'm better, but that I've already come through it. I've already been through these things. I've lived a life of expectation and having been failed. Just as you have. But maybe I've changed my perspective and my point of view. I've gone through a lot of those things and realized that it never ends in life. If you keep that, that in your mind that life is about these expectations, then you'll always be unhappy. So I've, maybe I learned something. And maybe my perspective is 
not to expect, just to be thankful for what you have, just to appreciate where you are in the here and the now, to spend the time to maybe, you know, I, I said a thousand words, but if one thing rings home, if it rings true, then maybe take that and be the seed that moves you in another direction. Because that's what it's all about, really. I mean, you're not here for your health, so to speak, and neither am I. We're just here to support one another and to encourage one another to just be the very, very best that we can be. So don't expect. Just go for what you want. Do the very best that you can. And whatever you have, at this moment, be thankful for it. Trust me on this one, and I'll, I'll say this a thousand times over. I know people that have wanted so much and have never appreciated one thing that they have, only to find out one day it's all gone. And then when it's all gone, you know what they say? I wish I had it. I wish I had that. So where you are, you're in a very neat position because you have the foresight now to look forward and to actually understand that and say, no, that's something I should be maybe changing on how I look at things. Maybe I should just appreciate what I have right now. I'm doing very, very good. I'm here, as a matter of fact. Wow, I mean, we're, we're pushed to the very back. There's people sitting almost outside. We need a bigger room. So that's good for you. That says something about you. All right? Just see the positive in all of this and what you're doing. Don't expect. Just keep working towards what you're doing. Be thankful for where you're at. And I promise you, I guarantee you, I guarantee this, you will be successful. You will be successful. I don't know who I spoke to the other day. Uh, who was it? I spoke to, and they said, be careful about saying 100%. That's right. Went to, went to Gozo, spoke to a hotel there. They were interested in what we were doing. And uh, she said something to the effect of the, the power of this program. I said, the program is 100% successful. Everyone succeeds if they follow. Succeeds if they follow. It's an expectation. Not for me. It's not an expectation. It's a reality. It's impossible to fail. It's impossible to fail. I haven't seen it yet. You can sit here and give me every story and turn around where you're not successful. Did you follow everything? Did you do everything? Did you do it how it should be done? And if you did all that and you still haven't changed on the weight scale, does that mean you're not successful? No. Do you feel better? Do you have more energy? Are you getting stronger? Are you becoming more aware? It's impossible not to succeed. It's impossible. It's always just in the way you look at it. So you're not going to fail. And when you start to accept that fact, when you start to accept that fact that you will not fail, then you start to accept the opposite. I can only succeed. And when you realize that you can only succeed, you know what, it may, you know what tomorrow feels like? It feels so good. You know you're going to wake up tomorrow, thank God, you know, God willing, and it's going to be a great day because it's in your hands. So different perspective. Start to try to work on those things if you can, okay? And uh, that would be the topic for the day. Don't expect. <music>